Hello and welcome to another Overlord Lore video and thanks to my patrons for enabling it. And today, we will take a look at Enri Emmott's rise to power. And we shall start at the very beginning. Enri at the dawn of the series was just a mere border villager. And the only reason why her life was comparably peaceful until the event is because the forest, normally a haven for all manners of wild and dangerous beasts, was controlled by the wise king. Therefore, this border village was not very militarized and more concerned with their own survival. And like most settlements on the periphery, their opportunity to trade was quite limited. While Irantel was close and could serve as a market for crops and the occasional bit of meat, especially during the annual war, where demand for food was higher due to the soldiers being present in Irantel. The proximity to the Empire of Baharut means that trade with other villages on the Imperial side was limited. And we can assume that most of the traders and travelers missed Khan entirely in favor of directly passing through Irantel. So direct trade should be near to non-existent and as such all transportation costs would be on the villagers side to bear. The sustenance focused economy, the relative isolation, combined with the neglectable population of merely 200, meant that life was very simple. And therefore, Enri Emmott growing up in these simple surroundings focused most of her labor and thoughts on the task of survival, getting water, feeding livestock, seeding, tending to and harvesting crops, and keeping enough of them in reserve to pay the taxes and tributes levied upon by the kingdom, which are up to 80%, which is awfully close to Bretonia's 90%. So life wasn't exactly easy. But even then, all of this hard but peaceful life came to an abrupt end, when knights attacked the village and began slaughtering their inhabitants. Henry's father gave his life to enable her daughters to escape, but even then she was chased by a member of the Sunlight Scripture masquerading as an Imperial Knight, and even in plate armor. The Knight had no problem chasing Henry and her sister down, and after the Knight had caught up to her, Henry, despite being just a 16-year-old villager, hit the armored Knight straight in the face, breaking her hand in the process, only for a chance to flee. This of course greatly enraged the Knight, but this enragement was also the reason why his sword strike slightly missed the mark and wasn't outright deadly, but Henry was still struck down by it and therefore she readied herself to catch the blade in a desperate attempt to save her sister's life by giving up her own. But the blade never harmed her again, right in front of her eyes and the eyes of the false knight, Ein's old gown walked out of his gate and killed them effortlessly, even being disappointed about their weakness. After that he offered Henry a potion, and while initially she refused and therefore being consequently almost executed by a world item and an enraged albedo, Henry eventually accepted the help of the undead and was healed. After that Eins created a protection against arrows and tossed to them two horns of the goblin general, trash drop items as far as Eins was concerned. While Eins had antagonized the knights, it was therefore in his best interest to build up a reputation with the villagers, so they in turn would hand over information. During all of this, Henry, despite the extremely unfavorable odds, never gave up to protect her own life, or at the very least, the life of her sister. It is not that she tried to be weak and resigned herself to capture and death. The false knight was simply too strong for her, and with this in mind, Henry was now granted the protection of another, that of Ein Solgaon's gift. Now, being granted these items and the ability to summon a goblin troop was like winning the lottery as far as Enri was concerned. And it had certainly nothing to do with Enri's ability. At this point, Enri's only act of strength was to protect herself and her sister long enough so that Ein Solgaon may arrive. But curiously enough, most lottery winners are prone to ending up broke, addicted, and in general in a worse condition, despite them hitting the jackpot all because they couldn't handle their newfound wealth. And in general, the audience inclined to play the lottery is usually financially illiterate, aka they don't possess strength of their own. And in a sense, Enri, a village girl, without any leadership experience, ended up in a similar situation. And to stay within the metaphor, Enri is a lottery winner that had just lost both of her parents 
much of her social environment, barely survived a life and death situation, and was now responsible for the well-being of her little sister. Despite all of the stress, the losses, and her trauma, Henry not only ended up not bankrupt or dead, because she couldn't handle her newfound fortune, she started with a million dollars, and ended up a billionaire. That, in her case, is the leader of a powerful, prosperous and peaceful city, with some of the most important scientific research centers in this part of the continent. And most of this is due to Henry's will. She, despite never wielding power and never wanting to do so, still faced the challenge head-on and was ready to become a leader to take on the responsibility not only for the goblin troop but for the entire village itself. So therefore it was not only the gift itself but Henry's decision, her will to do the best with it, that enabled her to ascend. After a huge part of Khan's population ended up dead, the villagers made a similar decision. Instead of giving up their village and flee to the relative safety of Irantel, they decided to stay and to train themselves in order to fight off future invasions. In this situation, the introduction of the goblin troop meant that the deeply shaken villagers, distrustful of outsiders, were much more ready to accept the aid of goblins, since in a sense they came from within and since they needed any help they could get right now. From that point on, Henry did her best to grow into her role as a leader. While the village elder was still formally in charge, Henry allocating her goblins to patrolling the perimeter, to aiding her and the others in the fields, to sending them out to hunt, and of course to using them to train the villagers of Karn and the survivors of the other villagers, became a huge unifying factor. I mean, taking villagers from different locations, killing off their loved ones, traumatizing them, and then thrust them all into a different village with a different leader, all with fear and scarce resources in mind, isn't necessarily a recipe for a stable environment. If during the first few days Henry didn't give all of them directions and a way to focus their emotions, their fear and their anger towards something productive, then it could just have happened that the villagers fought another until every last inhabitant was either dead or fled Karn. Instead, the village stabilized itself under Henry and thus became a suitable location for Inferiar and even more important, his grandmother Lizzie Baliar, who was the most famous potion maker in all of Irantel. Henry's ability to keep the village stable enabled it to host one of the most important research facilities outside of Nazareth, and thus, it was also awarded the protection of Lupus Regina and was granted another far more stable wall to defend the city in the making. With the crush in Firiad for Henry, she also became important enough for Eins to grant her personal protection, and later her sister was also added to the list of people not to kill. At that point Henry became the de facto leader of Khan after having taken over much of the responsibility already. She also integrated the ogres into her village, which is a feat in and of itself, since ogres are known for eating humans, because they are fairly easy prey. She also acquired Britta, a well-versed scout and former adventurer, since Britta, after barely surviving her run-in with Shaltir, had enough from the life of an adventurer. And I believe we can all understand her. The addition of Ogre, Scouts and the Goblin Troop also meant that Khan was able to acquire more resources. While the normal villager diet consisted of very few different dishes and meat was quite the rarity, the amount and the variety of food available to Henry and the villagers greatly increased with the significantly larger labor pool. A Scout, especially one supported by Goblin Wolf Riders, is easily able to hunt down a deer, therefore securing a source of meat. The Ogres great, strong and powerful, are excellent at breaking the ground open, enabling the villagers to plant and tend to a much greater amount of crops. And Henry's increasing skill as a leader meant that she became much better at directing the overall available labor force. And the access to the overall better food supply, in combination with the farm work, meant that Henry was actually able to build up muscle, enough so that she was able to beat goblins in arm wrestling. At this point it is also important to note that while the goblins were an outright gift, that Inferior were relocated alongside her grandmother was partially due to her skill and partially due to luck, the acquirements of Britta, the other villagers and the ogres had far more to do with seizing an opportunity than being granted success. Henry, through her influence of these key aspects, 
and to the readiness and wishes of the villagers, in addition to Nazarick's support, had managed to create something of her own. Her skill of leadership was self-developed. Eins being new to governing himself couldn't have shown this to her. She earned it for herself, and it was her choice to bring the goblins into Karn, rather than to take her little sister and make a run for the hills. While Eins had his mostly protective hand over Karn, it was the management skill of Enri that made the village ultimately a prosperous and well-suited place for further development. Her willingness to use the opportunities that presented themselves to her, instead of giving up hope and succumbing to despair, finally culminated in the summoning of the goblin army during the second defense of Karn. I also already made a video on the goblin troop and the goblin army, link is down in the description. After that, General Enri the Bloody managed to integrate the 5000 man strong army into her village, and with the discovery of the previously unknown mechanic, Eins had all the more reason to support this village with food and granted additional protection until it yet again became self-sufficient. Henry's choice to acquire more experience and to tend to the village during the first eight books has given her enough experience to live up to the greater challenge of managing a town and Henry keeping the now greatly grown village peaceful and thanks to her troops well protected finally made it a suitable location to house yet another research facility in addition to the already present Balia potion shop, the runecraft workshop of the dwarves, where an almost lost art of magic is currently being revived and expanded upon, and in a broader sense Enri's rise to power resembles a more classic anime story, a protagonist not being isekai for once is thrust into a life-changing situation and has to gradually develop her skills. But in her case it's not an ever escalating series of powerful moves that turn battles away from tactic and strategy to ever increasing power levels and throwing asteroids at armies, but rather it is all about Enri's ability as a manager. Her development into a person able to withstand the pressure of and living up to the responsibility placed upon her shoulders. In a sense Enri's story resembles the rise of a salary man rather than that of an action hero, which ties in with Overlord's broader themes of leadership and responsibility. It seems that Einzugaun was suddenly isekai to be the CEO of the most influential company in existence, while Enri was slowly built up by him, to the point that she was able to become a manager of one of the company's branch offices. Eins de facto trained Enri and the village to become a viable host for his research facility by granting Enri necessary aid in the form of labor, food and protection, while simultaneously depriving it of the protection of the wise king of the forest and later testing it by having a few trolls attack the city. Eins made Khan to become strong and therefore the now strengthened citizens, namely Enri, was able to do something even Eins didn't know was possible, summon a goblin army, thereby increasing the value of trash drop items into something with actual firepower and weight. And again, this is especially important because in order to control and hold land, foot soldiers are irreplaceable, even more so if you intend to conquer all of it. So by strengthening the border village of Karn, Einzelgaun and his kingdom did not only gain a stable, well-defended city for their research, but also valuable knowledge directly from the villagers themselves. So by strengthening others, by being just to others, Einzelgaun had strengthened himself and his realm. And again, this is precisely why his majesty is justice. And with that said, thank you very much for watching. And special thanks to Al Capone, Andy, Angel of Death, Bad Guy E, Boyzilla, Diabetic Centaur, Dystopia, Felis Catus, Gigafight, Hector Morino, Hoss, Jason, Chromius, Large Z, Lord Touch Me, Lord Ulbatalane Oddle, Matt, Marcos, Mr. Shoes, Minno 13, Mirtis, Primus 11, Sasuga Einsama, Sebastian, Search, Sparkly Unicorn, and Vash Hawkeye. Thanks, guys. Anyway, Have a nice day, over and out. Und am Ende sage ich nochmal was Deutsches, um euch zu verwirren. 
Was hat er jetzt gesagt? Was hat er gemeint? Was bedeutet das? Man wird es nie erfahren. Hahaha. <lacht>